The digital rupee or the central bank digital currency as it's officially called sometimes is confused with cryptocurrencies. Yes, both are digital assets but that is where the similarity ends. A CBDC is a digital currency which is issued and controlled by the country's central bank, in this case the RBI. Cryptocurrencies on the other hand are unregulated and they're issued within decentralized networks like blockchains and they're not tied to any one particular entity. Their value is dictated by investor sentiments, the usage and the user interest. So they turn out to be quite volatile and therefore are more suited for speculation which makes them unlikely candidates for use in a financial system which requires some sort of stability. Now CBDCs in turn they mirror the value of the fiat currency and they are designed for the purpose of stability and safety of use. Now why CBDC you ask? Well there's been concern that broad adoption of cryptocurrencies like bitcoins across economies that could hurt domestic currencies and also cause some sort of monetary policy to become less effective. Now that is why more institutions are exploring their own CBDCs. Now the advantage uh, for governments like the government of India is that being a digital currency it is easier to track all the transactions which are done through authorized channels very easily and therefore frauds can also be prevented. Now what is exactly a CBDC? Now to explain what a CBDC is, picture this, like how credit cards and applications are used to make payments, CBDCs can be transferred across networks and bank accounts quite seamlessly. CBDCs are also risk-free and they are not really subject to any bank or financial institution's liquidity failure or their credit liability issues in any form. And this is different from the money that you keep in a commercial bank. Is a digital rupee pegged to the value of the national currency, you ask? The answer very simply is yes. The digital rupee is pegged to be the value of the Indian rupee and simply put, digital rupee is going to be an electronic form of the currency which is issued by the RBI. All banknotes which are issued by RBI in turn are backed by assets like gold, uh, your government securities and foreign currency assets among other things and a digital rupee will be nothing but an electronic representation of the same rupee. Now CBDC uses blockchain and other technologies behind it as well. Now you'd ask if you can make payments digitally through UPI, IMPS, RTGS and whatnot, then why should you even use the CBDC? Well, UPI, IMPS and all of these, they use underlying currency or cash to transfer funds at the end of the day. In this case, it is expected that payment rails will work together with the digital rupee to ensure that there is a more seamless payment transaction. Digital payments which are made uh, via payment methods like your Google Pay and so on and so forth, they require that every rupee that is transferred by this mode is backed by physical currency or cash and involves the settlement of the transaction between banks and the central bank. Now the advantage of the digital currency is that it is going to be settled instantly because it is going to be transacted by a clearing house which has direct banking or backing of the RBI and not the bank intermediaries which is the case with something like the UPI. So you have the advantage of not requiring any sort of middleman to link the bank accounts with online payment systems. So that is one of the big plus points. Now you don't really need a bank account to be able to use the CBDC because that's really a way for uh, banking the unbanked because CBDCs are issued directly by the central bank of the country. Uh, so unlike other digital money, they can be used by citizens who don't even have any bank account at all. You also asked how does this impact banks in turn? Well, some experts have expressed fears that retail CBDCs could compete or replace bank deposits and depositors could run to CBDCs during crisis. To this, RBI responded earlier and said that CBDC is a currency which does not pay interest and therefore its impact on bank deposits deposits is going to be very limited. There are two types of CBDCs broadly, uh, the retail types which is for general purposes and the other kind which is called the wholesale. Now the retail CBDC is something that common man, uh, people like you and me can use for things like contactless payments and on the other hand wholesale CBDC is going to have a very specific use case and it can be accessed by specific entities who are authorized specifically by the Reserve Bank of India. Now in terms of the structure of the CBDC itself, RBI has proposed two structures, the token based one and the account based one. A token based version of the CBDC could be more suitable for retail while an account based version 
could be preferred for making wholesale payments. The existing Indian banknotes, for instance, they currently work on the token system, which means uh, that whoever holds the currency in their hand will be presumed to be the owner of that currency. In an account-based CBDC, on the other hand, the intermediary, which is like your bank, will have to verify the authenticity or the owner's identity. If you want to read about RBI's views on the matter, some of you have asked us about that. RBI did release a concept note on CBDCs on the 7th of October, which talks about their vision for digital currency. It is a public document which you can access very easily on RBI's website if you so like. Now, India is not the only country which is looking at CBDCs. There are at least 105 countries which are exploring this. 19 of the G20 countries are actually, uh, you know, uh, looking at this as well, and 16 are already in development or pilot stage. So besides India, there is South Korea, Japan, Russia, and other countries which are also experimenting with CBDC.